Have numbers settled? No, people are still joining, Donald. Let's okay, just I'll leave it just one more minute. Yep, that's fine. Oh, there's Malpang's roof or something. Is the idea, sorry, I should have asked this before, that people use the the question and answer or the chat? I think either is fine. The chat is probably uh, yeah. easiest. OK, I will encourage that to avoid having to follow too many places. Can you join and monitor chat, please? And I can yeah. Yeah. help monitor um, yep. hands up. We'll do. Because I can't see both. Yep. OK. Hmm? Oh, okay. Okay. Donald Annie tells us that uh, the Q and A will be better than chat. Okay. All right. We seem to be settled now, Donald. Oh, okay. All right, I'll just send that. So, uh, hello everybody, and thank you for taking the time to uh, to join this webinar. Uh, we'll try and keep this reasonably brief so that you can uh, get on with your lives. Uh, first of all, before going any further, I just want to note that we are uh, recording this webinar so that we can share it online later with those who are unable to participate in either session. Okay, um, our agenda today is, is really not to get into any deep discussion about the catalog of collections and uh, the, the detailed issues in implementing and populating it. Uh, our goal here is really threefold to make sure that uh, everybody has a chance to understand the process that we're trying to follow. Uh, secondly, to uh, identify any obvious gaps in the scope, uh, things that you think we should be planning to discuss but uh, have failed to, to recognize. And thirdly, to, uh, to plan in a little bit of detail how everybody can be involved in the next steps of this process. As you will have seen, we've organized a consultation coordination team uh, to, uh, to steer this activity and in particular to provide uh, support and curation during the upcoming uh, online discussion in April. And uh, you can see on the slide at the moment, those of you who have access, uh, the members of this team, several of whom are on the line right now, including um, Alex, um, I don't know whether he wants to say hello, but he's there. Uh, Quentin, uh, Tim, hi, uh, Tim Robertson, uh, and we also have uh, Mao Fang Luo. Uh, I can't actually see her at the moment, but uh, she's, uh, she's certainly joined the call. Hi, uh, and uh, at the Chief of Secretariat, uh, we have Joe Miller uh, and uh, Kyle Copus and uh, Annie. Uh, helping us with uh, the practicalities on that side. Uh, and they will be monitoring uh, any inputs and questions that you submit, uh, and we'll try to get to those as we go on. I've had a request, which I'll just repeat, that if, you, if you're using uh, the, the controls in Zoom, you should see both the opportunity to participate in the Zoom webinar chat, uh, and a number of you have already done that, 
But there is also a questions and answer Q&A uh, tool. Uh, and that is probably the preferred way to raise any things that you'd like us to discuss as we proceed. Uh, as, we, as we go ahead, if there is, uh, is any topic that uh, it's suitable for uh, a broader, somebody else uh, on the call to, to say a few words, uh, we can open up the microphones to do that. Okay, so uh, I've already outlined what our, our scope is and I believe you've seen this agenda. Before going any further, um, I'd like to emphasize that we see this as a twofold activity. Uh, we're deeply interested in the question of how together we can improve the information base that we have about the world's natural history collections. And uh, the, the consultation process itself is focused on answering those questions. But at the same time, we have a, uh, a, an associated issue that we want to be exploring. And we'll be looking for your guidance and input uh, into this over the coming, uh, the coming month or so. The point here is that uh, we all rely heavily on conferences and workshops to carry on our work. Uh, the field of biodiversity informatics uh, involves many national, regional, and global workshops each year. Uh, and this helps us to be an international community that really does uh, have strong relationships between uh, colleagues in different countries, gives us a chance to work effectively together to solve shared topics or problems, uh, and we have, because of it, we have uh, an excellent uh, international network reflected in many of the organizations uh, that you're all involved in. However, uh, this does mean that uh, at a time when the world is becoming more and more aware of the challenges around our CO2 emissions, that we are often contributing to those problems. It also means that we bias many of our activities towards contributors who are able to travel to some workshop or conference. Uh, and I believe that this seriously uh, disrupts our chance to work as a truly global community. And of course, for many people, if they're going to go to a workshop on another continent, they have to set aside several days to participate, to travel, uh, potentially to recover from the travel. Um, and additionally, uh, at a time like this, it's clear that uh, we can't always count on our ability to, uh, to travel uh, in the ways that we expect. So we do need, uh, I would argue very strongly, a better alternative that we can use. Not in all situations, but uh, for many of the ways in which we want to work with one another. And uh, we've been thinking about this for some time, and we don't believe that we have all of the answers to this, uh, but uh, we want to work on a model that could help us to, uh, to have uh, a new form of international workshop that is highly participatory and that makes it as easy as possible for us to build shared international vision. Uh, and in doing so, uh, to be wiser about how we spend our remaining CO2 budget. So the different model um, has several goals and this, uh, this first workshop on the catalogue of natural history collections is our first attempt at doing this kind of thing. Uh, and as we go, as I've said, I'm sure we'll learn that there are aspects of what we're doing that are far from ideal and that we'd like to improve. Uh, I hope we don't get to the situation of deciding that the whole thing is a complete disaster, uh, but we want to work with you to learn how to do these things and perhaps to come up with a model that we can reuse in many other situations, not just within uh, the, the international community, but also at national and regional scales. So our first goal here is to work on developing a shared vision, uh, which we will put into the form of a white paper and submit uh, with an authorship that includes all of the contributors uh, to an appropriate journal. 
We want to do this in a way that as far as possible avoids the need for international and national travel, uh, that people can participate in this from their normal place of work or their homes. Uh, I realize that with these webinars, this isn't 100% true, uh, but as far as possible, we want to make it easy for people to participate at the times that most suit them. Uh, those of us who have been involved in international video conferences know that for some, that in almost every case, somebody has to join those calls at a very unfavorable time, two o'clock in the morning, etc. We want to avoid that. We want to keep this at a low level of technical requirement. Uh, we want to make it easy for people who may not have uh, access to, uh, to really high quality videoing systems to be able to participate. We want it to be something that helps us to maximize particip participation, that uh, anybody, anywhere with an interest and something to contribute to the topic should be able to join in and participate in the discussion, uh, that it shouldn't be limited uh, to those who can find a way to travel to a workshop or who are specially invited. And as I've said, uh, we really want to learn what could be improved in the future. And I'm hoping that out of this first low carbon consultation, we will end up with, with two papers that we produce, one of which will be on the topic of the consultation, the catalog of collections, but the other of which will be on lessons learned and things that can be improved in the future for helping us to uh, interact in this kind of way. Just to give you uh, some orientation around the timeline we're following. We circulated a few days ago the, uh, the ideas paper. Uh, we see this as an important part of this model. It's a chance for us to set out a topic uh, and to identify a number of key discussion areas that need to be considered. Uh, and for future examples uh, of this kind of process, our basic assumption is that they would all start with something like this, a kind of paper that would lay out the map of the issues that need to be addressed uh, and then give structure to the subsequent discussions. Right now, we're uh, at the stage of trying to get feedback on that ideas paper. And the webinar today uh, and the one tomorrow are intended to help us to improve and fine tune the ideas that are in that paper. And following from that, we want to bring in uh, some of you and some of the other collaborators around the, the catalog uh, around the world to, to help us to prepare some further materials that will give insight and useful background uh, for participants in thinking about some of the issues in the ideas paper. From that, we will establish a space in the GBIF discourse forum uh, with a number of pages that I will just discuss in a moment, each of which allows uh, the global community to participate, provide ideas, and, uh, and together, hopefully, uh, start to reach some kind of consensus perspective on what we agree and what are the remaining open issues. And so that discourse site will be used for the main consultation running over the period 17th to 29th of April. Uh, it will be a just a normal discourse site, but the coordination team will provide support so that regularly we provide email summaries and updates to all of the participants that help you to orient and uh, know exactly where you can make further contributions on each day. Our aim is to make it possible for somebody setting aside perhaps just half an hour a day, um, lunch break or in the evening or any other time to be able to contribute to the daily cycle. And that uh, as we go ahead, uh, we move through that two week period towards uh, some real shared understanding and ideas on the important aspects of the topic under discussion. And out of that, uh, we want to produce uh, a white paper as I've indicated. The discourse site 
uh, we're, we've given some thought to how we want to structure this so that it's not just a, um, a set of uh, open topics. Uh, we want to make sure that there is a very clear landing page that gives guidance on where to start and points to all the most important items and materials that are needed for somebody joining the discussion. That would include separate pages for each of the contributed materials, the ideas paper and those that we are soliciting from yourselves and others uh, to guide the discussion. For each of the 22 topics identified in the ideas paper, we would open up a dedicated discussion thread. The, uh, the coordinators will monitor those threads uh, steer the discussions, and if it seems that more input is needed, uh, prioritize those as ones that we uh, that we highlight uh, in the email pro the email summaries that we send a around uh, daily uh, during the the consultation. There will also be a link to all of those email summaries uh, so that uh, anybody who's perhaps missed a few days can quickly catch up with what's been going on. Uh, and identify if there is some topic around which they should provide some comments. And finally, uh, out of all of this, uh, assuming that things go in a way that is positive, uh, I'm hoping that we will also start to build a summary of ideas that would form the basis then for us all to develop a co-authored paper at the end of the consultation. The topic for this workshop is to address the development of a single unified global catalogue of the world's natural history collections, while at the same time supporting the different activities, the different networks, the different communities that are already effectively managing such catalogues for their own space, such as Index Herbariorum, uh, or the World Directory of Culture Collections, or for particular regions such as uh, Europe or Australia uh, in, these, uh, in these examples here. We want to get to the situation where those who provide corrections and updates to this information are simultaneously feeding into any of the portals that are needed uh, by, that are used by different communities to access metadata, contact information, and other details about collections. So this is an effort to focus on how we federate our activities, join them together, uh, and deliver something more comprehensive as a whole. Uh, the exact mechanisms that we follow to do this and the challenges we need to overcome are the topic for the main consultation. You should all have seen uh, the ideas paper that was distributed, uh, and you should have seen that it structures the discussion around four broad areas. The ways in which we would hope to use a catalog, uh, really trying to establish the universe of use cases that matter to us. Looking at the information that should be in such a catalog or to which the catalogue should link. Uh, not every piece of information needs to be duplicated in such a catalogue, but we do need to make sure that it is effectively linked into all of the other biodiversity information and research information that matters. We do need to think about the technology challenges for the catalogue, how we make good use of the sites and the databases and the data standards we already have, and what gaps may still exist if we're going to uh, build something more effective together. And given that this is all about supporting the work of natural history collections, of the curators and researchers who use them, we need to think about the ownership, the management of this information, make sure that it meets their interests, uh, and also how we do something that is sustainable and persistent. Uh, which includes issues obviously around funding as well as uh, the, uh, the oversight of the whole activity. 
Each of the 22 topics in that document has a structure, uh, as you can see on the right, uh, a short paragraph that discusses some of the key points uh, that, uh, that may be relevant uh, and gives a broad shape to the topic. And then a set of questions which will form the basis in the discourse forum for the discussion threads. Uh, and so everything at the moment, uh, our plan is to structure it around these topics and trying to uh, discuss each of them to the stage where we feel we can point to uh, existing solutions or we've got a clear idea of the path forward. I don't want to spend too long uh, on, on this, but we've, um, we've tried to make sure that the topics identified in the document uh, under each of these four areas are reasonably comprehensive and inclusive, uh, but we do recognize that there may be important aspects that we've missed. In particular, uh, we recognize, or maybe I should say I recognize because um, a lot of this is probably based on my own background and perspectives, that there is probably still too little focus or potentially too little focus on geological collections uh, and paleontology uh, and on living collections such as botanic gardens, culture collections, and potentially even zoos and aquaria. Uh, and that if we need to think about additional topics for any of those areas, I would appreciate uh, assistance in identifying them and defining what we would like to explore. As mentioned, uh, the first, first major category is around uses for the catalog, the use cases for which we need this information, help us to find collections, help us to find specimens, uh, help us to map the pathway towards digitizing the world's collections, perhaps assessing the total value of global collections, something that may be an important tool for us in securing funding for their sustained management. Uh, we certainly recognize too that the information that we may be able to gather and that is already held in catalogs such as Index Herboriorum is important for improving the value uh, and increasing our confidence around data uh, in other biodiversity information categories such as specimens and, and publications. And there's a, a whole range of different linkages we need to form. Right now, when information on a collection gets edited and updated, it doesn't necessarily flow to all the places that it could be used. And this can cause a great deal of duplication of effort. And we want to focus on that. And perhaps most interestingly, we'd like to take some time in the consultation to think about what sort of new and enriched services may add extra value, not only to the catalog, but to the collections themselves. Much work has gone on in Tadwig and elsewhere in developing standards for describing natural history collections. Uh, we'd like to uh, reinforce that work, not duplicate it, uh, but if there are things that we need to know about collections or information that we should be managing about them, we would like to be able to make sure that these are well addressed in the existing standards. And we'd like to understand what other linkages to, uh, to GBIF, to, uh, to GenBank, uh, to other data systems might be ones that require special attention. The technology components that we have to hand include all of the existing pathways that exist in, in different networks for publishing and updating collection data. It includes some major databases, uh, several of which I've already mentioned. It includes the Global Registry of Scientific Collections that GBIF is curating and which is intended as an anchor point for linking much of this work. Uh, it potentially includes collection management systems such as Specify, KEMU and many others as tools that could play an important role in updating and maintaining this information. And there are also questions about the interfaces and APIs that we would like to support. And finally, if this is going to be uh, sustainable, we've got to be thinking about this whole uh, ownership of information, the communities, uh, the role of the technical infrastructures uh, that 
do not actually own the content but have an important part to play in supporting and maintaining it and making it more accessible. Governance arrangements, uh, incentives and recognition for people who help to maintain information and ultimately uh, funding uh, to make to keep this going. So I'm going to stop here uh, and I'd like to uh, ask those on, on the call uh, whether they have uh, any particular additional topics that they would like to identify uh, and also whether you have suggestions for ways to improve the process as I've tried to out outline it. And if in fact you've got questions uh, just that I've still not made things adequately clear so far. So I'll pause here um, and I think I have the question and answer box open somewhere but I can't see it. Um, I'll leave it to Kyle and Annie to let me know if there's any We are monitoring responses. that Donald. Okay. No, no questions. Okay. Chat. Nothing on chat. Okay. Uh, I, so please Please continue to, uh, to think about those questions and uh, you, you still have an opportunity to do so in the week or so after these webinars. Uh, it won't be completely closed afterwards, but uh, I'll come back to this again uh, in a couple of minutes. The, the other thing that I particularly wanted to, uh, to open up is that we are, uh, serious about the idea that this is not a uh, an activity that should be driven just by two or three people. We want this to uh, form the basis for a truly open and collaborative consultation. Uh, and so uh, right now um, we're looking for any of you or any other colleagues working at the moment, especially obviously in uh, managing information about natural history collections or in helping to bring that information together in portals and tools. Uh, if you would like to prepare a document, a slide set, a video, a podcast, pretty much anything else that can be shared over the internet and that uh, other users can view at a time of their own convenience, then uh, please get in contact uh, in order to uh, propose your contribution. Uh, such contributions, we'd like them to respond to one or more of the topics identified in the document and to explain how they relate to those topics, either as solutions or as explorations that may have identified some of the challenges that need to be addressed. Uh, we would like to keep these so that uh, anyone can review them, read them, view them, whatever, within about 10 minutes, uh, so that it's relatively simple for anyone to digest uh, a number of these things and respond to them quickly and easily. And as far as possible, uh, we'd like to avoid assuming that people already have in-depth knowledge of your projects and activities. Uh, and I realize that there's a challenge keeping things short uh, and at the same time explaining everything. But uh, we'll certainly work with you to try and get that balance right. So that's one thing. Uh, we're looking for offers of uh, materials that respond to the ideas document and, uh, and help us shape the discussion going forward. Secondly, uh, we're looking for anyone who would be interested in providing even just on one or two days, some assistance with translation of some of the materials. Uh, one of our concerns is that uh, there is still a barrier. Uh, we're still using English as the language, the primary language for this consultation. And uh, particularly for the daily summary emails, uh, if you would be interested in trying to uh, set aside some time to translate some of those or some of that information into other languages that may make it easier for other contributors to participate more effectively, please let us know. Uh, and if you think that it would be possible and valuable for some of your colleagues to run a thread on the discourse forum that is in another language, uh, 
then we would, again, like to hear from you around that and to make sure that we have ways to capture any important ideas coming out of those, uh, those threads uh, and including them at the appropriate places in the wider discussion. Lastly here, um, you all have a potential role to play in communicating what we're trying to do here uh, and making sure that any of your colleagues that may be interested uh, have uh, the chance to, to join in. Still good to proceed? Okay, yes. uh, which takes me to my final slide, which is any final suggestions? Uh, I'm more than happy for this to be a very crisp and brief call, but I uh, don't want to shut anybody off from speaking or answering, ans asking anything. Ah, oh, Quentin. Yeah, I was just thinking, um, and I know some of the other people on, on the call might think the same things, that we really need to think how we can motivate people to, for instance, put uh, their collection descriptions in a very general way into Wikipedia. In, not mm -hmm. necessarily in all languages, but in their at least their home language, uh, so that we can link out to that, because that gives a very or could give a very good general description of a collection for the general public. Um, and provide uh, not necessarily data that wouldn't be in a, a catalog, but catalog is very much um, sort of hard uh, atomized data, whereas yeah. Wikipedia can give much more uh, approachable description and pictures and things like this that maybe yeah. we don't want to deal with. No, I think that's a fair point. There are a few references to, I think particularly to Wikidata in the the document. But uh, one of the areas that we do need to be thinking about is the presentation and reuse of information in contexts that are actually useful to people and keeping it current in those places. So Wikimedia would be uh, a very natural part of such a, a topic. I've made a, a note to re-emphasize that. I think, well, if I can come in again, I, I think um, the issues of living collections is is quite difficult i think um for her herbarium botanic gardens which often linked it's a very obvious thing to do to, to have both in there um it seems silly to separate them but they have very different demands and we have that's one area i think we need to look at uh, very carefully um, right there's issues of of how much people want to be open with what's in their collection and things like this and maybe we won't have details of the collection so much but, mm -hmm. but i'm not sure i think i need to think about that a bit more maybe um other people on the call might uh, who, who have living collections need to think a lot more about that right and and i i suspect that it may not be a single simple answer that uh the issues around a culture collection may be very different from some of those around a botanic garden and zoos may be even further removed from our core use case and example. Yeah. Incidentally, so I, I don't know how Zoom works and how to, oh, there's a question. Someone's, I couldn't figure out how to make questions. So but somebody seems ah. to. So uh, Ellie, Ellie Wallace asked a question. Um, right. She says the museums often have trouble adding information about themselves in Wikipedia, as it's seen as advertising. I tried to ask a question in reply, but it comes off as an answered question. My apologies. <laughs> um, yeah, my, yeah. My, my question to Ellie was, is that also true in Wikidata, in her experience? And she's replied as another open question. Oh, there we go. No, Wikidata is more persistent and accepts self-authoring. Okay. Um, do, um, do we want to see if Ellie wants to say anything? We can unmute her if she if you if you're willing, Ellie. Why don't you un unmute her and see if she wants to say anything, and then if she has a microphone. Yeah. Okay. He's asking you to. Yeah. We're just unmuting Ellie. Okay. Oh, how exciting. I've got a little button saying unmute. And here I am. Hi, Ellie. There you are. Hi. <laughs> um, 
Um, so yes, so my comment was really just around um, uh, Wikipedia. I think um, a lot of museums will have experienced um, having their their uh, entries um, either deleted or uh, edited out because uh, they um, often can't be referenced, and it tends to um, and self um, kind of self authoring tends to be frowned upon in Wikipedia. Um, right. But yes, definitely in wiki in in um, wiki data, it's um, it, it is a better um, place to allow you to put up information that you want to um, remain more persistent, I think. And it's also good. It's also obviously a good place to be putting up persistent identifiers and that kind of thing, which I know are dear to Quentin's heart. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, the, I guess one general thing that I'd, I'd like to say about um, having participated in attempts to describe collections in the past is that uh, I think we should think very carefully about who the audience is for collection descriptions because they often become, when, when you start particularly, um, and what I mean in particular is just the descriptive text about what does your museum or your collection do or represent or contain, uh, it often becomes, so if you've got 200 words to write about your collection and yours is a, a big um, a big collection that might have social history, um, material culture, as well as uh, natural history, it can become very, the, the descriptive bit of it can become almost meaningless because it's just so general that uh, no yeah. one can get anything out of it. We might want to think about um, specifics, quite specific things um, for natural history, like uh, what, what types do you have? Um, people often raise the issue of wanting to know where type mm -hmm. specimens are. So uh, that might be something to focus on. Good. Rather than getting too caught up in general descriptions. Yes, yes. Uh, and I think I, I think that's part of the purpose for topic uh, the the one point seven I think it is uh, around the the kinds of services we would like to see associated with a catalog, which is which is how could this inf what information do you want to be able to get out and how do you need to be able to get it out and that includes things like do we have a way to pull back information on all the types. Uh, I have an email from Paula. Um, okay. I, I, I have an. I, I have. I have. I have my first offer uh, of some assistance with uh, some translation. Uh, so um, I certainly appreciate that, uh, and uh, would be grateful for any others. Um, and it doesn't mean that you have to con con commit to translating massive amounts of information every day for two weeks. Uh, I think we can try and be strategic and work on um, a strategy for doing it sensibly and uh, at the kind of level that's really going to bring some value. Oh, okay. Uh, we're, we're just making sure that we're keeping an eye on who's uh, raising their hands. I didn't want to speak over anyone. When, when it comes to technology section, um, I'm under no illusion that we will be able to solve and decide on all of the, the aspects. Um, when it comes to the likes of Wikidata, um, I'm keen that we get onto the roadmap um, that it is something that we need to understand the potential of Wikidata and actively start looking to synchronize and work with Wikidata communities. But I don't see in this workshop that we will be able to um, solve all aspects of this. I, th I think that's a fair point that we, we originally uh, scoped these workshops as trying to produce roadmaps for the path forward. Uh, and in some cases, we'll be able to identify things where they already exist and the roadmap is more to avoid reinventing something that's already successful, uh, but working out ways to make it more sustainable and for us all to support and contribute to it. Uh, in other cases, we may have a fairly clear idea of the sorts of things that we need to do together. Uh, and it may, in those cases, be something where we're pretty much starting to develop uh, almost fundable proposals uh, that we could uh, seek the resources we need to do certain things. And then in the more extreme case, we may just identify that a whole load more um, exploration is needed, 
but we may be able to go into that exploration with some real understanding of how we think any solution would fit into everything else we're doing uh, and therefore make it much more targeted and useful. Certainly that's, that's how I'm uh, focused on this. Some, some, some short to immediate results, medium term things, and then long term goals. Tim again. Again, <clears throat> and we have something on chat. Uh, I, I just wanted to, to say that um, if anyone wishes to contribute material, um, they can approach a moderator or Donald or myself directly. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll we'll collect the, the material and bring it into the forum. It wasn't yeah. immediately clear um, how people contribute. Right. So this is this is part of our first time of doing this, and we're learning as we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not feeling an obligation to make this a very very long thing. Uh, have a question from, from Paula. Paula. Do we expect that potential technical and not so technical solutions should be region focused somehow? Thinking of the realities different regions face. I, I think this is an important aspect of what we need to discuss that coming into any um, effort to build a global solution and assuming that one size will fit all usually means you'll fail. On the other hand, coming in with the assumption that nobody's going to change anything or that um, we, can, we can have a, uh, a forest of different solutions for every problem tends to leave us extra challenges in the future. So I think you know, part of any discussion like this is around understanding what are the critical pain points where we need to come up with a single solution and that if we don't, it just makes everything else less effective and what we have to do in order to get to that single solution. And alongside that, to understand how much flexibility and openness and completely free reign we can give for uh, different institutions, regions, whatever, uh, to be able to do things differently provided they, they fit in with some kinds of patterns. Uh, this is this is this I think is is a key thing that we'll need to be discussing in more detail. But it's a key topic. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, in that case. Um, as I think we've we've reached the end, I'd I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to to join this call. I'd like to uh, ask you to give thought to uh, any ways in which you would like to participate more actively uh, as we we go ahead. Uh, and if you just hate the whole idea, please tell me that too, because um, any feedback uh, is is important. Uh, and you have our email addresses so you can get in touch over the next few days. Uh, so hoping to see many of you online in April uh, and hoping that you are all uh, safe and uh, in good situations at the moment with all of the, the global uncertainty and panic around coronavirus and um, have a good evening, day, whatever. Thank you. Thank you very much, Donald. Thanks, Donald. Thanks. Donald. Thanks.